All right, so I'm Andrew King here from The Gamer. Uh, we just brought about the clown apocalypse and the killer clowns from outer space. And I'm actually here with three of the creative forces behind Killer Clowns from Outer Space and the franchise going all the way back to early 90s, right? Or late 80s is when the first one came 1988. out? 1988. 1988, okay. We're going to talk about the game and the history of the franchise and sort of what it means today. Um, so I'm curious, uh, actually, can you all introduce yourself uh, to our viewers? Yeah, I'm, I'm Edward Kyoto. I was a producer of uh, the original movie. Stephen Kyoto, the director. I'm Charlie Kyoto. Uh, we wrote the, uh, the movie together. I'm a production designer. And played Clownzilla. In wow, the movie. Clownzilla. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Oh Zilla. my gosh, that was you. You look so much better now <laughs> than, than there. Yeah. You got better. better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm curious what goes into making a great horror comedy, both on the, you know, on the big screen and for, for players now when they're coming into Killer Clowns. Well, I don't know what makes it for a movie. I, we just tried to make a movie that we wanted to see. Yeah. And it was really based on our love for the 50s and 60s sci-fi movies. Yeah. Uh, so that was it. That with a mix of Marx Brothers, Looney Tunes, Mad Magazine. And, you know, despite the seriousness of the title, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, yeah. the, we, the, the basic instruction to the actors and anybody involved with it, that they had to play it absolutely serious. Okay, yeah. That this was a deadly monster despite its cosmetic, you know, comedic right. veneer. Yeah. That it was a life and death situation. Yeah. So the actors had to play it absolutely real. Right. And yeah. that, that kind of offsets the absurdity of the, the monster versus the severity of the situation. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, we took um, all the movies that we loved yeah. and, uh, or the premise of, uh, you know, a forbidden planet and stuff like that, and we just do a little spin on it, like we did a spin on clowns. We make clowns, not men in makeup, but monsters from another planet. Yeah. And uh, it was just uh, keeping it, um, you know, just uh, uh, faithful to the premise that there's an alien invasion, the classic alien invasion, and then yeah. trying to convince the, convince the authorities that there's aliens killing people. The spin we put on that is, what if the aliens were absurd, ridiculous, and you're telling them that clowns are killing people with cocoons and cotton candy, yeah. the authorities would just throw you out. Right. So that's what, we just took it to the next level of trying to convince people of something ridiculous. Right, I mean, it's hard enough to convince the authorities to care about, you know, like a great white shark like in Jaws. Yes. And then when you make yeah. it absurd like a killer clown, you know, it compounds it even, even more. Yeah, I do see the the influence of the Marx Brothers and and the, the clowns you're playing. They all have sort of different physicalities and way that they act. Yeah. Are there different um, in the game? Are there different? Uh, do each of the clowns play differently? I noticed that I didn't have access to like a melee attack, but somebody else did. I had like a you know one of these and then like a popcorn gun. Oh, so yeah, they, they all play different. Yeah, in the in the game there are different attributes. That each clown category has a certain strength. Yeah. One's stronger, one's faster. One has more agility, and there customizable makeups and then options of your weapons and your your keypad options in terms of the little tricks you can okay, play cool, on. Cool. So yeah and that and that's all Ilphonics. Yeah. Uh, they brought they brought that that gameplay and that that sort of gaming menace to our basic concept. Well that's yeah. it that's exactly the, the difference. In our narrative we just wanted clowns and basically each one could use a cocoon gun or a popcorn gun. We yeah. didn't attribute anything special to any of the clowns. Yeah. And uh, that's because of the game. That's what they had to do so that each clown had a special thing yeah. on top of the the, the, the basic yeah. uh, clown. Rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's the road been like for you all with the killer clown starting in 1988 it's 2024 20, there's a game out like sort of what's the journey been with the the franchise over the decades uh, how, how much space do you have one word frustrating long and winding uh, yeah, right out of the gate after the film we wanted to do a tv series based on the, 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 the clown universe that we created yeah and we've been pitching for the last 36 years different shows different venues but uh Hollywood's really difficult, yeah. um, so it's it really a hard battle, yeah. uh, but we're really, really happy that it did take as long as it did to get something like this game going, because if we had done it earlier, we think we might have been disappointed by the technology, yeah, yeah. but I think what Elphonics has put together is really, really great, not just the visuals, yeah. 
it's the gameplay. Yeah. It's that uh, multiplayer. Right. Uh, was it three to seven? It's just it makes it more of an invasion rather than fighting one. Right. One beast or one predator. Yeah. Uh, and it just really brings the uh, the action that we had in our in our film. Yeah. It really makes the audience interact with. With yeah. The movie. Yeah. Right. Over over the years, the uh, the film, the original film, has gained popularity. Uh, cult classic, midnight screenings, a lot yeah. of convention appearances for us, and then the consumer products, the licensing and the merchandising is taking off. So now there's just this this to support a lot of different areas that just supporting this game. And then when Terravision uh, had an interest, and then Elphonic came on. To really put the game over the top, it's just just propelling it forward and forward. And what's like really exciting for me is yeah. over the years, people come to us and say, "If you guys ever do anything more with the the, the killer clowns, we go, I got to be in that. I, I want to be a clown so badly. I want to go kill people." Yeah. But a, an equal amount of people say they want to be victims. They want to uh, get okay. they yeah. want to get killed by cotton candy. They want to be put in a balloon and all these other clown kills. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is that is the game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're you're clown killing people and you're a victim trying to run away escape and kill clowns so right. it's uh it's just a, just a, the perfect storm right now yeah what many other you know films have experienced is that they we were told that uh, we don't want to do a sequel they weren't interested in it because it didn't make a lot of money yeah when it was first released well right. neither did uh, uh nightmare before christmas yeah. many movies yeah. Yeah. Know, many, many so the thing is, what it, what it had to do is prove itself with the fan base and stuff like that, and then the one person or the one you know the, the people that are sitting across the table that saw the potential of yeah. it. When it started making money with merchandising and stuff, there was more interest. Unfortunately, money drives right. you know development. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to ask you guys about that because Hollywood. You know, since the 80s has sort of been big on sequels and it's never been more than it has been for like the last 10 years, people going back and finding old properties and resurrecting them. What would you, would you be interested in that if they have it with Killer Clowns and what would you want to see, where would you want to see it go, you know, if, if a new movie got made? We didn't oh. get to tell everything that we wanted to, we didn't get to say everything we wanted to say about clowns. There's so much more to the clown universe, and we just want a chance to share it with the world. Yeah, yeah. the original movie's just so like a yeah. one little chapter. Yeah. 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 Actually, it's, uh, uh, what helped to do with the game is to have like, a wave two, introduce more clowns, more, more fun in games, go different places. Yeah. So I think that's going to be the best way to kind of get, let's say, anything else going as far as the property's concerned. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to, I, I think we covered most of the questions that I have, but I want to know, what would you want to tell, you know, fans about about why they should pick this game up and, yeah. Oh, well, if, if you're fans of the movie, you guys should check out the game because it's like living in the movie. It's yeah. got the action, drama, and suspense of uh, the climax of the film. And if you're a gamer and haven't seen the movie, play the game, then see the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's really funny. It's a, it's a testament to the uh, Elphonic team and that they they study, they love the movie first and foremost, yeah. and then they study it frame by frame, and there are there are uh, milestones and keystones in the game, in each map, that harken back to the movie, yeah. and then expand that world that, uh, that we could never do in our scheduled right, budget yeah. of making that movie. So you, you're walking around Crescent Grove, right. 1988, right. Uh, and it's just, uh, again, there are those moments that Hey, this is the movie. Yeah, you get to go in the police station. You get to go, you know, see the crazy house and the carnival. Right. And for the fans who want to see a sequel of any kind, I'd say, by playing the game and being an advocate for us, I think it's going to show that it's not a cult film. In fact, it's a pop culture phenomenon, <laughs> and uh, that's going to help us get bigger and more clowns going your way. Yeah, yeah. In 1988, 36 years ago, uh, we had to do this, we had to use this thing called film to make a right. uh, movie. There was no digital stuff. There were right. no cell yeah. phones. There was nothing like that. Um, what Ilphonics has done is they have done a clown version with the new tech and with amazing visuals, and they've raised the bar, and we're excited that that's the level yeah. we'll have to do a sequel or a TV series. Yeah, I mean, that's like the great difference between, you know, video games and film is that film, everything, you know, you're putting on screen, costs money, the locations, the actors, you know, food, everything. Yeah. And in games, you know, making a, you know, a realistic person isn't any less expensive than making a realistic clown in the same way it would be if you were making the, the movie. So it seems like a great way to expand on it. 
Oh, absolutely. And you put a lot of effort into making a feature film. And if you get one weekend yeah. that doesn't make the box office that weekend, that's the end of it. So all that effort put into yeah. like one weekend. Yeah. With a video game, I think you've got uh, longevity. You're out yeah. there a lot longer. Yeah. Like a television show as well. Mm -hmm. But I think the two working off each other, supporting each other, would be the way we would love to advance. Yeah. It, it also brings a, 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 a huge new audience to a to a, a property that maybe some hadn't seen. Yeah. They've heard of Kill the Clowns, but they've never seen it. Yeah. And now, when they play the game, they say, oh, well, there's a film? Let's let's explore. Right. Let's see the film. Well, that, that's a hope. And then, uh, in success, we get to keep this game going on for a very long time, and then maybe more things on the entertainment side. Yeah. For both of those, when can players pick up this game? And if they want to go check out the movie, where can they do that? The movie is streaming on Amazon Prime. Okay. The game is available for pre-order right now. Okay. It, the official release is June 4th, but if you pre-order it now, you get to play a week early. All right. All right. Well, great. Well, thanks for talking with you guys. I really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kyoto Brothers. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs>